On Friday, September 21st of 2018, Japan's Aerospace Exploration Agency, JAXA, landed their first two rovers on the asteroid Yugu. Now how did they go about landing these rovers on the asteroid? What are these rovers like? And how are they able to move across the surface in this low gravity environment? Let's talk about that. Now if you aren't familiar with Hayabusa or Hayabusa 2 and JAXA, I would recommend looking at the previous video I made that discusses a basic overview of what this spacecraft is going to be doing over the next few years. Now let's begin by discussing some of the backstory behind the MINERVA rover. Now the MINERVA is an acronym actually for Micro Nano Experimental Robot Vehicle for the Asteroid. And as you could probably get from the name, it's both micro and nano, meaning that the robots are actually pretty small. But the one on Hayabusa 2 is actually called MINERVA 2 because on the previous Hayabusa mission back around a decade ago, there was a Minerva rover as well. Now the original Minerva rover on the Hayabusa mission was around 10 centimeters tall, 12 centimeters in diameter, and about 590 grams, which isn't that big and isn't that heavy. And to put that in the perspective, it's about the size of a cheeseburger, but five times heavier. Now Minerva was deployed during the Hayabusa mission. However, it was deployed at a time when Hayabusa was trying to correct its altitude, meaning it was moving away from the asteroid. And in a low gravity environment that Hayabusa was in, that slow movement away from the asteroid was actually enough to shoot Minerva off into space, not allowing it to ever reach the asteroid that I was aiming for. Now we can say low gravity environment all day, but what does that actually mean? How can we make that more tangible? So first, let's discuss Yugu, or the asteroid that Hayabusa 2 is currently around. It's about one kilometer in diameter and weighs approximately 450 billion kilograms. Now that sounds like a lot of mass, 450 billion kilograms, but it turns out when you relate that to other celestial objects like planets or moons or even the sun, that's very, very small. Now to put it more into perspective, let's put an astronaut on the asteroid. What they're going to do is they're going to try and jump. So first they're going to bend their legs, but when they bend their legs, they're actually going to be pulling their legs up to them. And instead of coming back down to the ground, they're just going to slowly float down to the asteroid, taking about two minutes for their feet to actually be pulled down by the gravity. Then when they actually perform the jump, when they push against the asteroid, they're not going to go 10 meters or 20 meters, 50 meters, but they're actually going to completely leave the asteroid. They're never going to come back and just fly off into space. That is how weak the gravitational pull is on that asteroid. Now, if we go back to the Hayabusa and Hayabusa 2 missions, that shows just how hard it is to actually let one of these rovers fall towards the asteroid. You practically have to be standing still compared to the two and let the gravity slowly pull you in. And that's why for the original Hayabusa mission, the Minerva rover was flown off into space because it was barely moving away from the asteroid and that was enough to just send it away. So let's talk about the recent landing. It turns out Hayabusa 2 has Minerva 2 on board, but it's really complicated how there's actually multiple rovers and separate containers that have to be released at different times. So to keep it simple, let's just say that the Hayabusa 2 spacecraft has four rovers on board, two of which are kind of combined and then separated later, and the other two are separate rovers altogether. But the two identical rovers were released last Friday, and they are about 18 centimeters in diameter and seven meters tall, being about the size of a stack of pancakes, but they're identical to one another. They each are still pretty small, having only about two cameras, one thermometer, powered by solar panels, and having a mass of about 1.1 kilograms. Now you've probably noticed I've been saying rovers, 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 and not landers, even though if you look at these pictures, they don't look like they have wheels on them. And that's because they utilize the low gravity environment and these things called torquers. What torquers actually do is they create an internal torque on the actual rover itself meaning it can just spin just a little bit, which actually throws the rover into the air and is able to jump or hop across the surface of the asteroid. Now with all that information, knowing about what the rovers are, what they're capable of doing, the history as well as the low gravity environment of the asteroid, let's discuss what actually happened last Friday. So the Hayabusa 2 spacecraft started around two kilometers away from the asteroid. And over the course of about an hour and a half, they gradually got closer and closer, getting down to a kilometer, 500 meters, 200 meters, and then gradually to 60 meters. Then at this distance, they released Minerva 2-1, which was the container holding the two rovers, and then the two rovers were then released from the container, allowed to gradually and slowly fall 
down to the surface of the asteroid. Now, on its way down, the Hayabusa 2 spacecraft was actually in line with the sun and the asteroid, meaning it took pictures of its shadow. And as it got closer and closer, the shadow got more and more defined, and the pictures actually looked really cool. But let's go back to the rovers. After they released, they didn't hear back from them for another 24 hours, which had a lot of people skeptical about whether or not they actually succeeded or if they had just missed the asteroid like the original Minerva mission. However, after that time frame, they got data back and these images. Images showing not only the descent, they're very blurry, but also the first hop on the surface of an asteroid. That being an incredible success and another surface or celestial body that humanity has landed upon. Now with that being said, this is a major success for JAXA because of their ability to operate and maneuver in this low gravity environment. And personally, I'm really excited to see what information and more pictures come from this rover. Maybe a few that aren't so blurry, but still just seeing the surface of this asteroid that could be billions of years old. Now this isn't the end of Hayabusa 2. Remember, there are still two more rovers on board that have to be released, and it's gonna have to take its sample of the asteroid to then return back to Earth. So with all that being said, what do you think? Do you think there should be more missions to the asteroid belt and exploring some of the origins of the solar system? Or would you rather see some bigger missions to maybe the moon or Mars? Let me know in the comments below. But thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.